Do you think there is there is a, a revolution here? No. Had there been no media uh, campaign against Syria, things would have uh, uh, probably ended in April. Big problem for us, the media. You know, if the media speak the truth, we stop each problem here. It, it, it just if it speak truth. We are gathering in London today in Trafalgar Square and some 21 countries around the world from Morocco to, uh, to Nepal showing our solidarity with uh, peaceful protesters in the Middle East and North Africa. You know, we've got the names of some 300 people uh, who have been killed in, in recent days since the Security Council uh, veto. Syria is a, a tragedy of the most uh, painful sort. It's heartbreaking to watch those incredibly brave uh, people of homes, Bab al-Mar, to stand up to withstand such a a brutal onslaught from their own government. It is time for uh, that regime to move on, and it is try time to stop uh, the killing of Syrian citizens by their own government. There has been an intense military campaign by the government against protesters in the city, with dozens killed, shops and homes vandalized, and mass arrests made. On Syria, we condemn the violence against peaceful Protesters, peaceful protesters, peaceful protesters. We're coming killed back. We're and coming 1, back with the same issue. Soldiers were killed. We're also. coming back with the same issue. First of because all, because they refused. Respect, no, 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 no. Because they refused to take my orders to kill the people. Killed. My own cousin was killed. Yeah, 1100 supporter of the government. He's a strong supporter of the government. He was a lieutenant in the army, and he was killed. He was sent to our village. You know how we, how he was sent to our village? You know how he was sent to our village? His head, he was decapitated. He was decapitated. My name is Allah Ibrahim. I am a reporter and a freelance journalist. Uh, I've been to Dara during the last events that took place in Syria since uh, I've been to Dara for uh, the better part of April and May. I have went to places like Marat and Oman when a security checkpoint and uh, a security headquarter was attacked there and I have went to Homs also to cover events there. There are many questions unanswered till this day about Dara, which was the place that started the whole crisis in Syria. Up till today, the four people who were killed in the first protest in Dara, I've interviewed protesters who were along with them, and I've interviewed security officers and policemen who were at the scene. Uh, actually, stories don't always match each other, but something all, that all agree, that all the people I have interviewed have agreed upon, that they don't know who shot at uh, the protesters who were killed the first day. Protesters have told me that the shooting took place from uh, a high place over a water tank in the city, and they couldn't identify the people who were shooting. The government is not running against the civilians. These civilians are our own people. We are there to protect and, them. And you, but are, the government the is government killing is them. running against the terrorist armed groups. What terrorist we armed are groups? Who, who are they? Who are they? The Name them. Armed groups. Who are they? Yeah, those who 
those who have killed so far 500 officers and soldiers of our army and police officers and police soldiers and uh, security forces. Okay, again, you haven't named who these, who these victims, unnamed mysterious armed terrorists are. They, they, they are the outcomes of the American-British invasion of Iraq, uh, Anderson. They are the Salafists, they are the Takfiris groups, they are the brother Muslim uh, uh, military uh, uh, wing. wing. Uh, they are all these kind of extremist groups in the area. All of them spread all over the area after the American-British invasion of Iraq. My name is uh, Jalal. I'm from Homs. Uh, I will start. I don't say all uh, for my name because the tourists they give uh, my me and my family target for them. They saw my face. Uh, I lose my uh, my brother. The terrorists and the army group kill my brother uh, because uh, he do just he opened the shops and the terrorists they press him for he closed the shop. They want the city like die. They don't uh, anybody open the shop for uh, you don't find the food the. Uh, water, clothes, anything you want. That's why he have so many uh, time orders from the tourists, close the shop, don't open. And uh, 21 November, when he come back from shop to home, uh, he catch him in Babisba and shot him from back. An important example to make, help us understand what happened in Dara was the story uh, of turning Al Omari Mosque into a focal point of protest. Al Omari Mosque was a mosque used for prayers. Uh, protest started from it as it started from other uh, mosques around the city. But uh, at some point, a rumor was spread, and this is we're speaking in the first week of protest. They said that if you take uh, a wounded or an injured uh, person who was injured during protests or someone who has suffered suffocation from tear gas into hospitals, he would be arrested at, at those hospitals. At that time, when the rumors started spreading, we had less than three, I think, three or two, five cases of people taken to hospitals over tear gas suffocation. None of them were obviously arrested or executed, as the rumor said. But this rumor led people to say, to saying, let's start a field hospital in Omari Mosque. So some, someone brought a gas tank, uh, an oxygen tank, another person brought some fuel, and uh, a third person brought some gas, and some, uh, someone donated blood, uh, a third person brought uh, some medical supplies. And shortly they said, let's bring food supplies. And it wasn't long before people started saying, I have a pistol, I'll bring it here, and I have an AK-47, and I'm bringing it here to protect the mosque against any attack by the security or anyone. I am going to tell you some of the truth. First of all, I came to the center of one of the people from Dara, and the rest of them were in the center. They all said to me, I want you to help me with the weapons. And they gathered the weapons in this time in the Masjid Al-Amri, and they gathered the weapons, and the Sheikh of them, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord. So this is an indication of what happened in Dara and other places around Syria where rumors uh, have led people to go in a certain direction which was, which, 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 uh, let's just say that it wasn't uh, the ideal direction for their movements on the ground. Like the US, Al-Qaeda has endorsed the rebels' fight in Syria. Under President Assad, Syria has been a secular state. Some analysts argue that one of the reasons why Al-Qaeda supports the violent uprising in Syria is that in a less secular environment, it's easier to recruit new terrorists. My brother is not police. He's uh, from public, Syrian, have job, have shops from, for uh, clothes. Uh, so many times uh, when uh, we told him, please leave homes, like my family, he moved from homes to village. We told him, please move, it's very dangerous for him. They, they write in the wall uh, about my name, uh, my brother, in uh, the wall in the street. Uh, Zafir, uh, don't open the shop. Uh, Zafir, uh, you, supp uh, you support uh, Bashar al-Assad. Zafir, so many times, have this uh, like uh, message to him. And he don't care, because he, he still opened the shop. Still open the shop. 
And when he came back, I told you exactly in 21 November, when he came back from shop to home, before uh, about 40 meters to door to, home, to my home, some armed group shot him from the back. And this area, when uh, he died, no policeman, no policeman, just armed groups, that just tourists. My name is Mimi al -Laham. I'm a Syrian activist and political analyst. The, these media have been used to advertise for new fighters. Uh, there's a story carried by Al Arabiya and Al Jazeera uh, in June 2012 saying that Qatar and Saudi Arabia were going to pay the insurgents a salary for fighting. Now, they have been paid since the beginning. They have been paid since 2011 salary. So why would these media pick up the story now? And that's because they needed new fighters, new recruits. Please, come and see the real terrorists here. We have the rights to defend our land. We have a terrorist inside our country. We have the rights to defend it, to, to kill them and to arrest them. If it's happened in England, I know what the government in England will do. They will go by planes and boom, 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 kill everyone in the street. They don't care about who, the human rights. My name is Muhammad Rafa. I'm a Syrian actor. I live in Syria, uh, Palestinian origin. We have the rights to say what we want. We, we have the rights to go and protest as a protesters to say what we want, but without guns, you know? Without guns, because I'm killing my brother in the army, I'm killing my brother in the police, you know? It's not right, it's not right at all. At first, the story they went with is that there is peaceful protest being cracked down by a very strong state. The army was used according to them and the security was used. They didn't care to mention that up until May, early May, the army was not involved in dealing with, with the events in Syria, not even in cases where more than 15 security personnel were killed, like uh, in the case of uh, Dara in early days. In fact, no one mentions right now that the day when the army decided to enter Dara, soldiers in full armor, and they had uh, body armor, they had on their, uh, uh, they had armored vests, they had helmets, they had in, in, in their uh, combat uh, dresses, 17 soldiers were killed at the first day when they tried to enter Dara, which indicates a very strong uh, attack on the army and uh, a very heavy sniper attack. I personally saw an officer in the Syrian army, a colonel in the Syrian army, uh, he received a shot at which was fired more than 1,000 meters away, which indicate a, a high level of training. The reason I'm mentioning this because uh, news outlets said, okay, there are peaceful protests and there are this very strong state which is cracking down on protests and they were willing to ignore everything else. <laughs> يعني اختلط الحابل بالنابل وبلشت بالبداية مظاهرات سلمية عنا وللأسف اجوا ناس من برا مخربين وصاروا يستغلوا هالمظاهرات السلمية ويقتلوا هالعالم وشي بيحطوها بظهر الأمن وشي بيحطوها انه يعني ما عاد فهمنا لحنا شو اللي عم بيصير والوضع مكركب يعني ولازم تخلص القصة لانه وقفوا شغلنا وقفوا البلد وقفوا حال البلد و more pain when I, my brother died and I see why he died. What he do? He don't have gun. He's not policeman. He's not with the uh, Syrian army. Just him problem because he want the peaceful. He, he support Bashar al-Assad. Support Bashar al-Assad. This excuse, excuse for he died the terrorist free young. If you are not with them, you die. Had some people uh, in Syria not been told that their government is killing civilians, is killing fellow Syrians, many of them would have not taken to the streets to protest against this government. Had the people of Syria not been told that their government is prosecuting uh, fellow Syrians in other places, they would not have taken to the streets had the media not told people that the army is surrounding cities and bombarding these cities.
many people would have stayed at their homes and supported their army. But because the people are being told all these stories and, we, and because the Syrian media has no credibility and has built no credibility with its viewers and its observers over the years, Syrians are now more inclined to believe other media channels, including Al Jazeera and Al Arabi and many other TV channels. So because in the absence of, of information, rumors prevail. And these channels are now spreading rumor, rumors and hearsay. They have nothing concrete. تناقلت مواقع الانترنت صورا ومقاطع فيديو لما قيل انه مقتل رامي علوش بالاعدام شنقا من قبل الامن السوري مقتل رامي علوش من اهالي حما شنقا مقتل رامي علوش من اهالي حما شنقا وصوره رامي كانت حاضره موجوده واضحه واثار الضرب والاعدام واضحه ايضا على جسده وهذا ما يرتقي فوق رتبه القرينه ليعتبر دليلا دامغا ولا ينقض إلا بدليل دامغ آخر فهل هناك دليل أقوى من صورة الشخص الميت نفسه؟ بعيد الشر عن قلبه ليش بعيد الشر والزلم يتوفى؟ يسأل مراقبون لأن دليلا مناقضا ظهر يجيب آخرون رامي علوش من مواليد حما يدرس الطب البشرية في روسيا سمع بخبر وفاته مثله مثل غيره ورأى مشاهد لجثته بعد أن قيل إن الأمن أعدمه فصور نفسه في صور موثقة بأوراقه الشخصية وصور مقطع فيديو موثقا بالتاريخ أيضا بسم الله بسم الله اليوم الأحد مصادق 18-12-2011 أنا الطالب رامي علوش من أهالي حما أدرس في روسيا من فترة شفت مقطع على الفيسبوك وعلى الجزيرة وعلى اليوتيوب بأني مقتول على إيات قوات الأمن السوري وأنا الحمد لله صحتي تمام وأنا عايش وما في أي شيء وهذا المقطع لا أدري كيف وصل له وكيف انتشر والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Some media outlets outlets were involved in uh, fabricating uh, stories or in uh, making protests larger or in uh, providing images that were not from Syria and published as Syria. Denny, Syrian state television, as you know, is now airing uh, excerpts of, uh, of this video of you uh, that was shot. Uh, I'm not sure how they got this video. Do you know how they got it? Did they intercept it? Um, while I was trying to talk to CNN, I was online for like 20 minutes. So it's live broadcast. I don't know how they got it. We was, this is all private. See, we should have. This has all been deleted. We have to delete all this stuff. Right. This is all private. See, we should have. This has all been deleted. We have to delete all this stuff. Right. Right. I want to ask you some specifics. They say the truth uh, of Danny the Zionist. That's the right. title of this, and it's obviously he heavily edited. It's obviously he heavily edited. It's live broadcast. <laughs> Uh, they say one point, and I'm going to show this. They say that you were saying, get the target ready to shoot. Right. No, no, shoot it like I'm telling you. Let's right. take a look. The sound of the bang there was the sound of you guys oh, faking a shot. That, that was sound a long way ago. Even at the time, the area I was sitting in, wasn't even being hit. They were hitting another area, as I told you, it was called Kadi. It's about 15 kilometers away from... Went an hour ago, I just went on a rooftop to get civilians. It's, the street is right next to me, in the, like, 200, like 400 meters right over there. I went and picked up four civilians who were burning in the house. A mortar bomb came right on the rooftop of a civilian house. Even at the time, the area I was sitting in wasn't even being hit. They were hitting another area, as I told you, it was called Kadi. Is about 15 kilometers away from about Al Jazeera, which is uh, a fake channel, and I hate, you know, the fake channels and Arabia, BBC, everyone. But I mean, first of all, Al Jazeera. Al Jazeera is like uh, a room, you know, they control the protesters. Like, uh, if you are in Baptuma, you're sitting in Baptuma, you're watching Al Jazeera, you hear 
for, for you see in the, the Jazeera news saying there is a big bomb in Batuma and uh, you know uh, 10 people are dying you know after 10 minutes you will find the bomb in Batuma explosive after they read the news in Jazeera which means they are giving orders to the people terrorist people here to do what they want you know even in the internet website of Jazeera you can see that someone before the explosion of Midan, someone says tomorrow is gonna be a real, real good thing for the Syrian government in inside Damascus, so we will feel happy. Next day, boom, the explosion. You know, uh, someone I know has told me recently that uh, Jazeera did like the greatest plot ever. They started uh, creating. Uh, credibility over the 16 years they have worked in, in media and I was a person who would be easily found defending Al Jazeera against people who were criticizing it saying that it's a free channel it's a channel that has given so much to Arab journalism but I don't know if it was it was part of the plan why it's uh, established or not but what I know very well that Jazeera played a very destructive role and a very active role active in a very negative way in the events in in, in Syria they have instigated people to do more killing, they have instigated people to, have to lose faith in their government, they have instigated people to commit acts of sectarian violence. Not to say that the Syrian government is a saint or they are completely pure and, pure and they have done no mistakes, but the mistakes that the government committed here are no different than the mistakes committed by any government around the world, whether in England, where we're suppressing the recent events in London, whether in France, when they dealt with the, uh, the revolt of the immigrants. All governments around the world commit mistakes and they do bad things. But I think Al Jazeera took things blown out of proportion, out of context, which is the main factor here, taking things out of context and represented facts in a very misleading way. Welcome to Al Jazeera. It's November the 15th, day one of a new era in television news. I'm Shuli Ghosh. And I'm Sami Zaydan. This is Al Jazeera. اسمه ساري وجسده الغض كما الصليب المتدلي من عنق امه ينفيان عنه بالقطع تهمة رسمية معلبة طالما قال اصحابها ان القتل الذين يتساقطون برصاص الجند في طول البلاد وعرضها هم اعضاء عصابات ارهابية مسلحة او مندسون سلفيون اطلقوا لي من البراد قال لي لك الحاره ما فيها شيء اليوم لك العالم بالطريق مع باي ان شاء الله يا عمي بدي بسكوتي قد ما انا قال جار تنزلي انا بشتري لابني وانت بشتري لابني انزلنا قام قال لي اشتري لي وقيت لحمي قلت له يا عمي عمها انا جاي خالك بجيب لك لحمي قال لي على الطريق ما شفت الا رصاص بلش بالحاره جارت تقوزت مراقبته وبجا وما بعرف ماتت يمكن وابني واربع شباب حده وين اجوا ابنه والجيران والشباب وصارت ما بعرف رصاصه هي الحريه ابنه معه بسكوتي ما معه بعروضي ابنه عم تزحسني لو وعد وزير العربيه انه قال الجيش قتله يعني اه ما في جيش وما كان في امل لو الجيش موجود ابنه ما مات لو الجيش موجود ابنه ما مات اعطاه الجيش الله يرحمه الله يرحمه الجيش They've also employed false flag uh, fabrications. You have the Hula massacre, in which they actually killed 200 children um, and claimed that the Syrian army was behind it when it was revealed that these kids were not wounded due to shelling but due to stab wounds. Later, they claimed that it was pro government militia, Shabiha forces, that killed them. However, it came out uh, in a German newspaper, in fact, by um, the author Rainer Hermann from uh, Frankfurter Allgemeine uh, Zeitung. 
that in fact the people that were killed were pro-government. You know, they one of them was in fact part of uh, the newly elected Syrian parliament. Then the members of the Security Council also condemned the killing of civilians by shooting at close range and by severe physical abuse. Most of the killings that took place in Al Hula are due to this kind of assassination, killing at close range, not killed due to the artillery shellings, because artillery shellings would not leave the corpse, the, the bodies of the victims the way you saw them. Here we are talking about the Algerian killing styles in the early 90s. It's clear that this was set up to try to discredit the uh, Syrian military and to try to get uh, the populations it, both inside the Middle East and outside the Middle East uh, on board to some sort of uh, Western intervention. And for my family, more pain for us. When the media speak about, about the, our army, when they protect us, when we want from our army to protect us and defend us from these terrorists, the media and European media and America they speak about these stories, they protect the terrorists. They protect and they, they, they speak like uh, our problem with the, with the president, our problem with the freedom, we have freedom. And we die for our freedom. This is our problem. de derrocar gobiernos porque no les gusta a alguien, pues así pasado, así pasó con, con Libia. Por supuesto que nosotros reconocemos al gobierno sirio. ¿Y a quién quieres que reconozcamos? A los terroristas esos que están matando gente, tomando ciudades, lanzando bombas. Y es triste saber, leer y, y tener evidencia de que hay gobiernos europeos que reconocen a los terroristas, chicos. <ríe> Qué cosa, ¿no? Que reconocen a los terroristas y se reúnen con los terroristas y les financian y les envían dinero y armas. Qué cosa, ¿vale? Por eso digo yo, ojalá los pueblos de Europa sigan despertando y se den cuenta de la realidad y le exijan a su gobierno el respeto a la paz internacional el respeto a los, a los derechos humanos, el respeto a la soberanía de las naciones, Ramón, eso, eso es sagrado. Y cuando digo Europa también digo Estados Unidos, ojalá los pueblos del norte despierten. I would have a very clear message for President Assad, which is it is time for him to go. It is time for transition in this regime. Uh, clearly Britain doesn't support violence. These were the last moments of Ian Tomlinson's life as he walked home on April the 1st, 2009. PC Simon Harwood was caught on mobile footage, hitting him with a baton. Minutes later, he was dead. Yet, on Thursday, PC Harwood was cleared of the killing. And I don't think any regime that carries out acts as they have against their own citizens and continue to do so, um, by the way, uh, should survive. They marched through London this afternoon to the chance of no justice, no peace. On their posters, the question, who killed Smiley Culture? The police say he did, that the reggae musician from London plunged a knife into his own chest a month ago. But it's a statement which many here asserted beggars belief. If you said to us that he accidentally fell on the knife, we might, have, we might have swallowed that. But to tell us that he killed himself, he stabbed himself, don't insult our intelligence. What more evidence do we need about a regime that has brutalised its own people? It is 11 months since Mark Duggan's death and his family are still waiting for answers. Why was he shot dead by armed police?
I'm really surprised at the the way they have taken my grandson from me as if he was an animal. It's very indicative and informative to hear the Prime Minister of England describing the riots and the rioters in England as by using the term gangs while they don't allow us to use the same term for the armed groups and the terrorist groups in my country. This is hypocrisy. This is arrogance. You saw the popular uprising carried out by the poor of London. And you all heard Mr. Cameron saying that he will oppress this popular uprising with 25,000 police officers. So this is the democracy they call for. The behavior of Assad is absolutely unacceptable. You know, he has uh, lost any legitimacy to lead. Officers fire what appear to be beanbags and unleash a canine into a crowd of women and children. What we've seen on the part of the Syrian regime uh, has been an unacceptable uh, degree of brutality directed at its people. An unacceptable uh, degree of brutality directed at its people. The transition to democracy in Syria has begun, and it's time for Assad to get out of the way. I want to tell something about the West. They're calling for our democracy and our freedom. Uh, people are killing in Gaza long time ago, and then killing in Palestine long time ago. They're killing in Somal, they're killing in Afghanistan, they killed in, in Libya, they killed everywhere. No one, I, I, I never heard any one of them, he comes and say, yeah, hey, I'm with the human rights, let's stop this, you know? Now they care about the Syrian people. No, it's really bad con conspiracy because I told you, they want to kill us because we, we, we are defeating our country and we are the last chance for the, uh, for the Arabs, you know, for the Arabs. I mean leaders, Arabs leaders, because they're all betraying us, all of them. Do you think there is, there is a, a revolution here? No. أنا لا أظن إنه الدكتور بشار سيد الرئيس الدكتور بشار إنه دكتوري بالعكس هو كتير إنسان محاور وشفنا كتير بالحالات الشعبية عنا كان يجي لعنا كتير على المطاعم وشفنا كتير بحالات يعني بن منا وفينا. When the Arab Spring came to Damascus, the protests were peaceful and defiant. The demands were clear. People wanted to topple the regime. If you if we're speaking now. Uh, about how popular the protest movement is, uh, I think this is a this is a problem because we don't know we don't have an accurate method to to measure things. But what I know for a fact that when I, when when the president uh, or present loyalists or government supporters go down to the streets, they can rally up to three millions in in in, in, in five or six squares around the, the, around Syria. Uh, so there are protests in Syria and they have uh, popular support. But I think uh, government supporters are still the majority uh, by far. We want the We want the We want the We want the de la idea imperial 
se creen superiores a nosotros, pues. Se creen con derechos divinos, incluso, ¿será? De imponerle gobiernos a, a los pueblos árabes, a los pueblos africanos, a los pueblos latinoamericanos. ¿Qué cosa es esa? Oye, ¿cuántos problemas tiene Francia ahorita? ¿Cómo está el desempleo en Francia ahorita, Ramón? ¿Tú tienes en todo eso? ¿Qué te dicen la fuente de AFP? El desempleo, las empresas quebrando, los bancos saqueando a los pueblos. ¿Mm? Israel, it is not our real enemy. <laughs> We take help from anyone, Israel. We, we, we don't. We don't care. Uh, well, last year uh, we went to the Palestinian border. Uh, Palestinian people, are Syrian people, are some of Arabs people, they went to uh, the Palestinian border, border on Konaitra, to the Konaitra. It's uh, which means it's uh, one hour, one hour and a half far from here. Uh, it was Nakba day, uh, which is. Uh, Uh, f the day for Palestinian people is very important day to remember it. Uh, we were protesters in the in, on the border, so uh, the Israeli people was soldiers. I mean, they start to shoot us and throw gas uh, bombs on us, and then they start to shoot us with real uh, bullets. Which uh, and I had my cousin; he died because of this in front of my eyes. Uh, I couldn't do anything. I was only throwing stones. You know, since 1948, uh, since the so-called formation of the State of Israel or the Zionist entity, as some people call it, in every war between the Arabs and, the Sy and, and, and Israel, Syria was involved. In every time that Israel tried to attack an Arab country or tried to attack uh, Arabs in general, Israel, uh, Syria was involved. I feel, I feel bad about this because You know, Syria is the last co Arab country who uh, is against Israel and the uh, United States. In 1948, battalions from the Syrian army moved into Palestine and uh, took part in the uh, Salvation War, as the Arab histor historians call it. In 1956, when Israel attacked uh, Egypt, along with France and Britain, Syrian officers was, were there and the first a uh, suicide attacker or uh, istishadi attacker was Jol Jamal, a Christian from Latakia city. He, he attacked uh, uh, John Dark, uh, the, the French war vessel with his uh, torpedo, uh, with his, uh, torpedo boat. Uh, in 1967, uh, Syria was attacked by Israel in the, the, in, in the June war. In 1973, obviously, Syria was uh, uh, the main partner in, or was uh, the, the, the side that launched war against Israel. In 1982, in the invasion of Lebanon, Syrian troops were on, on Lebanese territories and they uh, contributed in fighting Israel. And we lost many soldiers in Lebanon, more than 3,000 at least in the, in the Israeli invasion and 10,000 in safeguarding Lebanon in general. And if we proceed to say, to say, like in every major war, Syria was involved, even in 2006, Syria was a, a close supporter to the resistance in Lebanon, in terms of accepting refugees, Lebanese refugees in Syria, and in terms, according to some intelligence sources and some journalists, of supporting the, the, the resistance, whether in arms or in technology, or in resources, in, in able to be able to carry on fighting the war against uh, Israel. Nosotros estamos, yo creo que muy lejos de aquella situación que se vivió en Nicaragua. En primer lugar, era solo la revolución cubana la que apoyaba a Nicaragua, ningún otro país. Casi todos los países de América Latina, cuando no apoyaban abiertamente la agresión contra los sandinistas, contra el pueblo de Nicaragua, callaban y por omisión apoyaban. La Venezuela de hoy no es la Nicaragua de entonces. La América Latina de hoy no es la América Latina de entonces. But the problem that uh, the Arabs people and Arabs leaders are fighting me to serve Israel. I'm, I'm, I'm like a brother to them, you know. I don't know why, why they are fighting me as a Syrian. We are like brothers. We must fight Israel together because Israel came and took our land. <laughs> 
لم يثني كبر سن هذه المرأة العجوز في مساعدة أبناء حيها باصطياد هذا الإرهابي المسلح الجبان المتخفي ورأزي النسائي خلال محاولته إبعاد الشبهات عنه وتضليل حماة الديار في أثناء تطهير منطقة يلدا بريف دمشق من فلول الإرهابيين المرتزقة بعد ارتكابهم أعمال قتل ونهب وسرقة بحق أهالي المنطقة I don't believe so much in conspiracy theories, but I, what I firmly believe is that many leading uh, media channels around the world have started telling the, Syria, the story of Syria in a certain way, and after a while they can't go back because everything they said before sounds ridiculous. You know, if the media speak the truth, we stop each problem here. It, if, just if it speak the truth, believe me, you know, the terrorists, why they didn't stop? Because the media protected them. They say, you are right. Kill, kill. We want the blood in Syria. Did the media, what, what they do with the media? The media, if they speak truth, we finish everything. We come back like before. We come back, they say. I'm going to send a message for BBC, Al Arabiya, CNN, Al Jazeera, and the whole media. Uh, companies and TV stations and newspaper, whatever. Just please, please, please have conscience. Work in the conscience. Be a human being. Uh, your work is really a sensitive work. يعني أنا بدي أوجه لهم رسالة للقنوات إنه يا أما ينقلوا لنا الصورة الصح اللي عم بصير عنا مزبوط يا أما يحلوا عنا يتركونا بحالنا ويتركونا نشوف شغلنا. I would love to say to the all Syrian people, live together like before, love each other like before, and our problems, we can uh, figure out to how we uh, make a solutions for our problems. Don't let anyone from abroad to come and control us and to tell us what we have to do. We know how to uh, organize our things, and we know how to uh, find the solutions of our, of our uh, problems, and that's better. We still Syrians. We still love each other. We are brothers in a way. In one country, we still live in one country. What I would like to see from my country is that it maintain its rightful place as the independent, staunch enemy of the imperialist vultures, the U.S., Israel, and their puppets, NATO and the GCC countries and may Syria defeat all her enemies and be the nation that stops the imperialist plans in their tracks.